How many percent? 50%. They're wow. building in excess of uh, probably about 1.5 million cars a year. And at, in the 20s, there were already 35 car, there were still 35 car companies in the United States. So Ford had about 40 to 50% of the market share, and the other uh, 30 companies were buying for the other 40 to 50%. So the way we're going to try this, Here's your first step. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the throttle up here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the brake, mm -hmm. this reverse, and here are the two forward gears. So the way we take off and stop, we pull down on the throttle, mm -hmm. we're in low gear. Okay, now we go to high gear, cut the gas off, take my foot up all the way. And then I bring down the throttle again, mm -hmm. adjust it okay. to what our cruising speed is. Mm -hmm. Now the thing is, so when I drive, I typically have one, keep one foot over here and one foot hand on the throttle. Okay. I don't worry about the brakes because mm -hmm. you're going to see why. Everybody ready? I'm going to slam on mm -hmm. the brakes. Yep. All right. Brace yourself. All right. <laughs> Anybody get thrown back in the seat yet? <laughs> the only reason we slowed down is we're going uphill. <laughs> Get the tool 
holes to do it. Uh -huh. yeah. So the whole thing you get because the majority of people he had lived on farms and so they can't be able to take care of the vehicle themselves. Uh -huh. hmm. And it's still, I mean, uh, there's still more than 500,000 Model T's registered in the U.S. Wow. And in fact, when I was learning to drive the... Had a little lamb. <laughs> Do we see the new bumps that went down? Yeah. Now I'm going to hit automatic rewind. Kids, do you see the automatic rewind button? <laughs> I'm glad, because that's a trick question. You see, automatic rewind in 1878 was kind of like the television remote control in the early 1950s when I was a child. My father used to look around the living room for that remote control channel changer until he saw me. And he would say, Chris, get up and go change the channel because the remote didn't yet exist. Well, track five, track three, track, that didn't exist in 1878 either. So I hand crank it. I eyeball it. Hope I get close. Now, my friends, the biggest challenge for any operator of this machine, both in the old days and today, when you make a recording and you go to play it back, you have to spin the wheel at exactly the same speed that it was turning when you first made the recording. If you spin the wheel too slow, spin the wheel too fast, and the recording would sound like the chipmunks. So we're going to keep our fingers crossed. I get kind of close. Mary had a little lamb. Bedroom. There's ones that are close, but still not not nearly as much. Right. You know? <laughs> Louise's room. Pre Civil War. And we got the proof on it, right? The builder. <laughs> Webster's study. Is a, I think that is. Is that it right there? History of the United Remember? States. Look at these books. Oh, where's the dictionary? Did you write them all? Dictionary didn't exist yet. You haven't written it. <laughs> is that it over there? Yeah. Is that the it's up somewhere. Oh, maybe it's over here. Is there like the first dictionary? Yeah, yeah. Here we go. There it is. 1828? That's the first dictionary? Yep. First what? Museum. I don't know. Oh. Machinist. 
<laughs> so you know what happens when you're in a shop like this as a young guy that's going to grow up? Well, shortly after the Civil War period, well, his dad's Ford, and he'll take young Henry to what? Shops like this, and he teaches him what? The value of these machines. So there's only so much you can produce per day, the piecemeal. So no need to worry about it, because when you're powered by hand, water, wind, or animal, it's the same output, limitation of output. Eventually, he'll go do an apprenticeship at a shop similar to Armington Sims. What's he learned there? A valuable insight. Everything works great until what? Until the stupid belt breaks off the line shaft. Then you have uncertainty of production and price. We'll never forget that lesson, but we'll always be right now because it. it's very cold. But you would have got your ink on here, lowered it. Two people would have been running this press at all times. They would have had an apprentice on that side rolling it underneath. Take your devil's tail, it's a nickname they gave this handle, and it takes the place of a screw and a bolt back here that two men would have raised and lowered. And now with this, it could go faster. They could get 250 copies off this press in an hour. As large as the bed is, they could do whatever they needed, newspapers to anything else. And they did them one at a time. And this was revolutionary for its time period. You would have seen these presses for over 80 years in the field. And they used them in every single printing office. Because um, it was considered. <laughs> first thing we would do is I got the paper up and I always do that first because if I forget you're printing on this frisket and then you have a nasty mess. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to ink it only because um, I don't want you getting ready and you, this stuff yeah. does not come out very easy. They pay me to get ink <laughs> <laughs> to put it nicely. So, And I'm going to put a, quite a bit, it seems like I'm putting a lot on really what I'm doing is the ink's a little, it's kind of very stiff today because it's cold, cold, so it's not staying. Mm. Lower it, yeah. now your job comes in. Grab that handle and roll it for me. Take this handle, pull it back towards you. You can see where it's not really about, oh give it a little bit, yep, and then let it go, and then unroll. Now you can see it's not really, a lot of strength, it's just timing monotonous. and being monotonous mm. and being fast. So, there you go.